Here's the test. All right. Dead Sea Scrolls said they pegged the date of new wine to the third day of the fifth month. The calendar type is Solar Sabbath, 364 days. That's what the Dead Sea Scrolls say. Barry Ah, he says the date of new wine is on the ninth day of the fifth month, ninth of all. He says the calendar is the Lunar Sabbath calendar, which is 354 days. Okay, this is the comparison right now, the comparison of the test. Barry Ah, right here, okay, or the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scroll date is true, third day of the fifth month, Solar Sabbath, 364 day calendar. Barry's Oz date is false. It's that simple. You cannot take this idea of new wine from the Dead Sea Scrolls, that's, that's verifying the Dead Sea Scrolls, and then put it on a Lunar Sabbath calendar that's not in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Doesn't work like that, okay? And by the way, this is a picture of Halloween 2019 at Barry Oz's Halloween party at his family's house. She dressed up as a two-faced half dog, half himself. This is it right here, really. Half dog, half himself. Barry Ah, right? With his family at his house. And if you care about Barry Ah, don't get mad at me. Call him to repent from keeping Halloween, the feast of Satan, with which he has taught to all of his children. His young child right, taught him all this feast. I called Barry to repent about this years ago. Over four years ago, I called Barry to repent. Warned you all four years ago. Barry continues to celebrate Halloween with his family and won't repent of it. At the same time, he's looking for the rapture, and he's trying to tell you all that you guys are all going to get raptured with him. Boy, you guys are not smart, unless you guys are uh, hate the truth and you guys love a lot. But that's just the way that I see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong and I can't see it. Here's a here's a screenshot of his daughter. It's public on Facebook right here. November 20. She posted it November 1st. She was quick to post the picture from the day before 2022. Okay. Of them celebrating Halloween. Okay. Family gathering Halloween. Okay. And this is last Halloween 2023. We're now in 2024. Halloween 2024 is not for a few months more. This is last Halloween. This is Barry's like daughter-in-law or something on her public Facebook page. November 1st, they're quick to post their Halloween photos. After midnight, they're posting it. 2023, Barry Oz, October 31st, 2023 Halloween party. He calls all of his YouTube viewers, his family. Family, did he invite you to his Halloween party with his other family? AKA the Feast of Satan? Here's his son-in-law throwing up devil horns, his devil horn Baphomet horns right here. Here's his daughter who he gave, he gave his daughter to this man right here, this Satanist right here, to throw up the devil horns. Come on, who's giving their daughter to a Satanist, to marry a Satanist? Oh my goodness, Barry, oh, wake up, dude. What have you done? Are you, you're so blind. You either hate Yahweh al and you won't come true about your sin. Just admit your sin and fear Yahweh and repent and try to save your house if you can and if they can be saved because she now doesn't belong to you Barry she belongs to her satanic husband here throwing up the devil signs at your feast of Satan party you're throwing on at your house this is your house Barry right here this is your other son you guys are all getting down on Halloween keeping the feast of Satan never seen Barry all keep Passover with unleavened bread with his family or any of the other feasts of Yahweh, but he's definitely down. They're about it and down to keep the feast of Satan. But he won't invite all of his raptured Christian family to his Halloween party because it would tell a lot about him because he doesn't want to come to the light. But I'm trying to call you to the light, Barry. Repent. It's that simple. Just repent. Be remorseful. Sackcloth and ashes, Barry. Save yourself, and then hopefully you can save your sons and your daughters, or else it's going to be just like what you got going on, okay? Feast of Satan party, all right? Yahweh wants people that are going to worship him in spirit and in truth, okay? His feast, his word is truth. The, 
the word like Leviticus, the Feast of Yahweh, Leviticus 23, those are true feasts, okay? The Feast of Satan is the way of the pagans, the way of the heathens. And that's what you got going on at your house, Barry. That's what you got going on right here, Barry. Look at you, like a dumb dog. His watchmen are all blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. That means they can't speak. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. You can never have enough viewers, Barry. You can never have enough attention, Barry. You're doing it for attention. You're doing it for viewership. They are all shepherds that cannot understand. You cannot understand the truth. You're too busy keeping the feast of Satan. They all look to their own way. The feast of Satan is your own way, Barry. Comic books is your own way, okay? Everyone from for his game. You don't want money, Barry. You want attention. You want people to like you and laugh at you, and you want attention from his quarter. Oh, this is your quarter from your own house. All these rapture watchers, people out there that say, he does, at least he doesn't want people's money. I give Barry uh, that. I don't take money or gifts. I don't ask for it. I don't take it. You got all these other rapture people out there, Christians out there. They're all telling you, giving you promises of the rapture while they're asking for money, looking for their own gain from their own quarter, doing it from their own house, trying to get money and get donations from you, broadcasting on YouTube from their own house, trying to get money. How pathetic is that? That's just straight pathetic. All right? So look. Very awe, uh, and why are they called dumb dogs? If you look at this chapter in the chapter, because they won't keep Yahweh's Sabbath, and they won't take hold of the covenant by keeping the commandments of Allah Haim, the Ten Commandments. They won't do it. I did a video about Sandy Armstrong, dumb dog Sandy Armstrong, over four years ago. The sons of the stranger that joined themselves, it's all about keeping the Sabbath day, guys about keeping, which is a feast of Yahweh. That's the first feast of Yahweh is keeping the Sabbath. It's about taking hold of his covenant, keeping the commandments. If you love me, keep the commandments. The commandments are not kept to gain salvation. But if you love Yahweh and you're forgiven by trusting in the blood of Messiah Yeshua, and you have that grace, you're given time to repent and do what's right, turn from your sin and do what's right. You're called from practice, from you're called from repenting, from practicing of keeping the feast of Satan, like Barry's doing, to keeping his Sabbath days. From keeping the pagan Sunday, the best day you understand, okay, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday is Gregorian day. It's the best we understood at the time. From keeping the pagan holidays to keeping Yahweh's holidays. From keeping the days of the heathen, right here, like Barry, the heathen, Barry the heathen, ah, all right, to keeping Yahweh's feast days, okay? His watchmen are all are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. They can't speak and tell you. They're not going to tell you when the rapture is going to be. They're sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. That's it. This is what you see. Barry, repent. Everybody else there, repent. Sackcloth and ashes time, guys. Now, new wine's about to be cut off. Come, they say. I will fetch wine right here. What's in your cup, Barry? I bet it's wine. And we will fill ourselves with strong drink. What you doing, Barry? Strong drink is that polluted doctrine that he teaches. Spiritual wine, spiritual strong drink is that false doctrine that they're teaching. That's what these blind watchmen, these dumb dog watchmen, like Barry All right here. Look at him. What a dumb dog right there doing. Wake up, Barry. Repent. I love you. Please repent for your own sake and hopefully the sake of your household and your son-in-law and maybe your daughter you've given over to a Satanist. What are you doing? Why would you give your daughter to a Satanist? Makes no sense. He obviously serves Satan. And the way that you do the gospel ain't the gospel. He will never be saved by seeing your two-facedness. Barry, your two-faced right here. Perfect Halloween outfit for you, Barry. Half dog, half human. You're two-faced. You're two-faced to the truth. You say you know the Bible and you brag. You, you put a slight brag in it, how you mark up your Bible. You read it so much. You know all these types, but you don't know about the feasts, about doing what's right and keeping the commandments. You can't even, you don't even have the understanding to know that you're keeping the feasts of Satan. You don't have the understanding that you gave your daughter over to marry a Satanist. 
Come on, man. She's under the covering of a Satanist, which means she's not covered. What are you thinking? You're just, you, you done royally screwed up. And I hope that you repent. Warning, with 100% certainty, almost three years ago, I used Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1, which is the hidden jubilee verse, and Jeremiah 52, along with astral archaeology this year, right here in this video, to restore the jubilee count. And we are in the 50th ecclesiastical year. That means that this coming Yom Teruah, Yom Kippurim, 2024, begins the sanctified jubilee year. And why is that important? It's because mourning and weeping and judgment comes before the redemption and joy of the Jubilee. Warning, we are on the verge of the Ezekiel 32 war, which is next, and possibly will start on the Feast of New Wine tonight or a week after New Wine on the 9th slash 10th day of the 5th month. And no one has any idea what the Ezekiel 32 war is. The Ezekiel 32 war is the Hezbollah war. The watchman of Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 1 through 15 is not supposed to be looking for the rapture, guys, as ignorant Christians think. But rather, the watchman of Ezekiel 33 is supposed to be looking for the sword that comes out in the Ezekiel 32 verses 17 through 32 Hezbollah war. Hezbollah, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, Russia, the Jewish Edomite state, okay? So um, Hezbollah, which is the kings of Tyre, okay? So there's a lot there. I've already talked about this. I've been talking about this for two and a half years. The prophecies of the watchmen right here of Ezekiel 32, 17 through 32 and 33 verse 1 through 15 were both given on the same day. So they are connected and they are, and they're, so they are connected as the watchman is supposed to look out for the sword and the terror that is mentioned in the Ezekiel 32 Hezbollah war. I've been talking about this on my channel for two and a half years, but the majority of you rapture watchers are heretics. Majority of you Christians out there looking for the rapture are straight up heretics. And you're heretics and don't like the truth that I speak. But the sword is the same sword that is throughout all of Ezekiel, it appears. Ezekiel chapters 7, Ezekiel chapter 20 through 23, possibly 24 and 25. We see it in 32, it's the sword. And then in the Ezekiel 38 and 39, it's the land is brought back from the sword. But first the sword has to come out. And I've explained that it takes up all of the Holy Land from Zaphon in the north, which is north of, above Lebanon, all the way down to the Negev. So I have other videos on it. So I have two videos on it. This one's over two years ago. This one is over a year ago about World War III, the Rider of the Red Horse, the Great Sword and Terror in the Holy Land, right here from the north all the way to the south. Here is Cyprus. Shout out to Cyprus, my home base for the last, like, almost six years now. Hello, ya. So shout out to Cyprus, and that's where it's at. So, all right. So as I said, it's the Ezekiel chapter 7 war. We see the sword in here. Violence, which is the Hebrew word Hamas, is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. Okay. Down here, speaking of the land, now, this is very interesting about Ezekiel 7. It's a judgment on the land. of, But in Ezekiel chapter 7, the Israelites or the Judahites are not mentioned. So it's not talking about the judgment on the Israelites or the Judahites, but the people of the land of Israel. Because I do not believe that the people that are in the land of Israel claiming to be Jewish are actually genetic Israelites or genetic Judahites. I suspect maybe 10% of them are unknowingly Judahites or Israelites, but the majority is not. It says they have blown the trumpet even to make them all ready. So they're getting ready for war. They're ready for the war. The war plans have been approved. They're getting ready for war, but none goeth out to battle. For my wrath, this is Yahweh speaking, is upon all the multitude thereof. So that's something interesting to see how it plays out 
And then down here in verse 18, it says, they shall also gird themselves in sackcloth. This girding themselves in sackcloth might be a hint. Now, let me remind you that the first time that it was destroyed, it, the, the land was destroyed, was by the Babylonians. They leave sieged on, the, on Jerusalem on like the 10th day of the 10th month. The siege broke through on the ninth day of the fourth month. And then Nebuchadnezzar sent back Nebuzaradan, his captain of his army, on like the ninth day of the fifth month. And they, uh, the siege was already broken through. They had already been there. They, then on that day, that's when they destroyed the temple and the city. On the tenth day of the fifth month, that's when they burned everything down. They had already looted everything out because the siege broke through on the ninth day of the fourth month. So they already had a full month to take captives and to loot and to uh, pillage and to get everything that they needed. And then the sword finally came at the end. They, on the, uh, they got word to come back and take it all down and burn the temple down on the 10th day of the fifth month. So they had already looted everything, and that's when the final sword came. Is that going to repeat? Is it cyclical? We're going to be watching for that day, the ninth, tenth day of the fifth month. So what you see in front of you it right here is this quick diagram of the Pentecad festivals. 50 days from the barley wave sheet, count seven Sabbaths, number of the following day, 50. That's the Shavuot, the first fruit festival of the wheat harvest, the festival of covenants. From that first day of the week, you count seven Sabbaths, the number of the following day, 50. That is the festival of new wine today. You count seven Sabbaths from that day. You number the following day, 50, and that brings you to the first fruits festival of new oil. And what I want to show with you, yesterday was the Sabbath. Today is the day of new wine on the restored calendar. I'm going to be talking about that coming up. But I found some interesting things here. There's a tie-in into the Sabbath day, Psalm 92, a song, a song for the Sabbath day. It says, but my horn shall thou exalt like the wild ox, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Shall be is a future tense thing that this person is going to be anointed with. It's a messianic psalm, speaking of the Messiah. Okay, the second Messiah, Yeshua's servant, Yeshua's Messiah. And then it says in this verse, mine eye shall also see my desire on my enemies, and my ears shall hear uh, my desire on the evildoers that rise up against me. Okay, his eyes going to see the evildoers who rise up against him. So that's what's going to happen here. And then what do we see in Psalm 91? A thousand shall fall at, my, at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eye shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked. So here you see my desire upon my enemies, my desire on, on the wicked, you know, hear, the, hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against him. Here thou shalt see it. So these are connected. So that's interesting that this Psalm 91, when the arrows are coming, and then the pestilence by daytime, the arrows at night followed by the pestilence by daytime, that is somehow connected with Psalm 92. Now, in chronolog chronological order of the Psalms, that happens before the Sabbath day. That's interesting something just to think about, or it's just close by, but these psalms are so connected, it's not even funny. So sometime in this period of first of new wine, where he, I shall be anointed with fresh oil, we see the timing of this event. It might happen before fresh oil, it might happen right after fresh oil. That's something for us to take a look at. And right now, just recently, this is just one month ago, Jewish State Hamas War IDF approves Lebanon operation plans. So the plans have been ready for everybody to make ready for the battle. But again, in Ezekiel chapter 7, they've blown the trumpet even to make all ready. That's what they've been doing the last month, setting up the army for the Hezbollah war. But it says none goeth to the battle. So something big might happen. We don't know. We're just watching to see how it goes. We're supposed to be watching for this war, not for the rapture like all you goofy, silly, heretic Christians are looking for. I know that you want the escape, and hopefully there is an escape for all those who have the true faith of Messiah Yeshua, who are trusting in the commandments and fear Yahweh Allah. 
Iran is one to two weeks away from producing enough material for a nuclear weapon. This is just recently. This is just a few days ago. This is what the, so they're setting up for this war. This is the U.S. Secretary of State, Jewish Anthony Blinken. He's saying that right here, okay, dual citizen Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State, is setting up for this Jewish state Hezbollah war and also the war with Iran. And they're going to do it at the U.S. expense and the expense of the Western Europeans. But that's just on you guys because you allowed it to happen. The salt has lost its saltiness. July 21st, this was just a couple of days ago. So this is in the narrative right now to get everybody ready for this war that's coming up. Why do I say it? Because right now, the Prime Minister right here, Milikowski, of the Jewish state is on his way back to America. He's on his way to America right now or landed there today, July 24th. He's going to be speaking to the U.S. Congress in Washington, D.C. to spread this propaganda well planned in advance. His speech was done for a whole month behind. They have all of the plans. They have playbooks in place. They know what they're doing. They think they know what they're doing. The purpose of his speech is to sell the American people in the Western world on the Jewish planned war with Hezbollah. That's right. He's going to try to justify this whole attack in Gaza of what they've done there, which is atrocities. And they're going to try to go ahead and sell everybody to go into this war with Hezbollah. But it's a big wrong idea. But it looks like that's the way it's going to happen. The U.S. is going to back it. The West has already backed it. They've already given them everything that they need to do this. All the politicians have been corrupted with bribes. It's absolutely, it is what it is, and, and all the people have allowed it, and therefore you're going to get the responsibility if things go down. I hate to say it, but that's probably what it's going to be, okay, because it's going to go out of control, all right? The U.S. and the West has been infiltrated, bribed, and blackmailed. The politicians are all, have all been corrupted, and, and, and the government's been hijacked and conquered, and by the, by the you-know-whos and the Western Europeans, the Western European people who were behind the states have lost their saltiness. You're no more longer salty, given to nothing. And remember what happened to Lot's wife. She turned around and she turned into a pillar of salt. Pot, and that salt, you can't use that salt for table salt. So there you go. It's ungood salt and lost its saltiness. So likely, I don't think that they use... Yeah, I don't know if they do that. The salt in the Dead Sea, you can't use the salt crystals at the Dead Sea. Yeah, you can now if you refine it. I tasted it. It doesn't have saltiness. It's like a bitter, nasty saltiness to it. It's not, it doesn't have any value. Um, it has to be super refined by other chemicals to get the saltiness back. But that's what happened to Lot's wife. She turned into a pillar of salt. Sodom and Gomorrah turned into nothing but salt. So the Jewish Hezbollah war will be a broader regional war. That if I am correct in my understanding of Ezekiel chapters 32, 7, and 20 to 23, if I be correct, uh, the, land of, the land of Israel, the earth's Israel, is going to be made desolate. Possibly, if that's how I understand it. I don't know. Again, warning, they've blown the trumpet, even to make already. So right now, the, all the war plans have been approved for this Jewish Hezbollah war. They're up there in the north. They've been training. They're getting ready. But it says none go to the battle. Is that going to happen here? I don't think that this was at the time of the of, of the uh, Judahites when the Babylonians came. Because when the Babylonians came, it doesn't. There's no record of of Israel or of Judah ever going to war with the Babylonians. I don't think. I think they all got scared, ran up in, and got besieged. That's what I believe happened. So that this verse might not be for that war back then in 587. 58, the 588, uh, 588 uh, siege of Jerusalem when Babylon came through the land. So that's something. And you see the word sword right here. All right. So brothers and sisters out there, Messiah Yeshua, who have his testimony and guard his commandments, Shalom, Salam Aleichem to you. Brother Nicholas James Vanderlein here. Today is now the third day of the fifth month, not the second day. It's actually July 22nd, 2024. So this is actually the Feast of New Wine on the 364-day calendar. And for all you out there who are bandwagon Christians jumping on the Feast of New Wine looking for the rapture, the people that are talking about it have the false calendar because 
the new wine. No one would know about the festival of new wine had it not been for the Dead Sea Scrolls. This means you have to have the Dead Sea Scroll calendar to know about the Feast of New Wine, or else it's just conjecture and a thought and a hypothesis. Now it's for certain, it's a theory, that there is a such thing as the First Truth Festival of New Wine, that it is a Pentecost festival, and it, the records for that are only in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So if you're listening to teachers like Burial, who has his Lunar Sabbath calendar, and I don't even think he's a Sabbath keeper, or if you have... Tyler, Generation 2344, whatever his number is, who is also talking about this, or any other Christians out there that are looking for the rapture on the Feast of New Wine, and they're giving you a totally different calendar, I'm going to be proving it to you in this video that you have to have the 364-day calendar, or else you, don't, it, you, just, you just don't got it. You just you not, you're, I have the whole wrong feast days and everything else, and it's false teaching. So... This video is going to be on the Pentecost of Acts, not just chapter 2, but chapter 3 and also up to verse 4, verse 4. Because all of these rapture teachers, okay, Barry came up with some new stuff. I found some new stuff. A lady in my video, in my comments over four years ago, she left a comment, almost five years ago now, left a comment. And she was the first one out there that I can see that says the Pentecost of Acts chapter 2 is new one. She did it, left a comment on my video. And she's the first one to find that. And after that, Barry found some types, and I found some information as well, and that's it. But I'm not using it to find the rapture, okay? Because I believe the rapture is a spiritual, uh, uh, a spiritual being caught up spiritually into another realm, spiritually in our spirit realm, while we're present in our bodies here on earth. But you just can't tell the difference. Just like Elisha opened up the eyes of his servant so he can see the spiritual realm around him. Kingdom coming to earth, I believe, is going to be the spiritual realm coming here. Our pineal gland or something spiritual is going to open up. And we're going to have a dimension into a spiritual access into heavenly realm somehow. That's how I understand the rapture to be. I don't know. But this is based off of Paul's description of the rapture. He didn't know if he was in body or out of body, but every time he came back from his rapture, he was here on earth. He doesn't remember floating back. Okay, even John the Revelator, he was, John who received the revelation or who received the hidden secrets of, your, of Messiah Yeshua, he was even caught up. The door opened and he said, come up here. And next thing you know, he was in there. We see all the other prophets, they're caught up and they're in, uh, Isaiah was in the throne room. So I believe it's a spiritual realm that people are going to get access to possibly and not this like this this um, idea that we're going to go to heaven because human beings were made to live here on the earth and that's just the way that I see it. I want to live in the kingdom and then after that we'll go from there but I'd love to see what the restored kingdom of Yahweh coming to earth is going to look like and all of humanity under the true religion un worshiping the one true Allah Haim, Yahweh Allah Haim, and I want to see what that's going to look like and live in that with my wife and my children and see my children go on. All of you people that are trying to like get raptured, a lot of people, unfortunately, I'm going to say this as humbly as possible, but as direct and frank as possible, a lot of people are going to get raptured in World War III by the nuclear weapons that are going to vaporize them. And I hate to have to say that, but it's likely probably going to be the case. So... With that being said, I hope that there is a spiritual escape. Yeshua said, hey, you know, um, uh, he looked like he promised that there was some sort of escape. We don't know what that is. I hope that there's a supernatural escape. That would be cool if there is to the safe place uh, with access to, to the heavenly realm spiritually. But we'll see what this whole rapture thing is about. Anyways, this video is... The real date of the new wine according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Also, it's about remembering the covenant of salt. All right. So this video, I'm recording this from and publishing it from Aqaba, Jordan, near uh, Biblical Ezion Geber. Had a fantastic blessed day of new wine with my family. Here's a picture of our new wine, our unleavened bread, and a little thing of salt to remember the covenant of salt. The Israelites are supposed to remember the covenant of salt, but I don't see any salt in the earth. I see the Israelites and the Western governments, if they be the Israelites, 
they've been conquered from the inside and they're nothing but vassals of they're nothing but vassals of the Jewish state so and of the Jews so that's how I see it it is what it is I'm already shadow banned in the algorithm so I don't even care that's just what it is okay so in this video I'm going to is going to contain new important information about the Feast of New Wine that many haven't heard before I okay there's a lot of information that I'm going to share with you even more okay because some of the things that Barry is talking about he already gave me credit and I'll give him credit for the things that he found but the woman that actually first said that Pentecost was new wine was this woman named Jeanette on my channel okay I believe that the prophecy of Joel might partially repeat itself starting on or just after the Feast of New Wine. Guys, it's right here in the book of Joel, okay? Yes, Joel seems to have the chronology for the 587 Babylonian siege, 588, 587 Babylonian siege, okay? And in 587 BC, Jerusalem fell. We know this because of my last video from the records of the tablets, the Babylonian tablets that we have. When we uh, combine those with the chronology of Jeremiah 52, we have perfect, perfect chronology, hello a -yah. But also, uh, Joel could have end times chronology being done second time. Joel's chronology starts off with his prophecy in chapter 1 with new wine. In verse 5 of chapter 1, right at the beginning, Joel, sa Joel says, The new wine is cut off from the mouth of the drunkards as they are drinking it guys so you have to go into the season of new wine for the wine to be cut off and what happened the babylonian siege of jerusalem the siege broke through on the ninth day of the fourth month nebuzaradan came back the general of the babylonians came back on either the seventh day or the ninth day and by the tenth day jerusalem the temple the the uh the structures the walls were destroyed he destroyed it and burnt the houses and it was all done what day was that tenth day and I'm going to prove to you new wine in the Dead Sea Scrolls happens on the third day of the fifth month so this makes total sense the new wine is cut off and these drunkards that are drinking the new wine these are the drunkards of Ephraim of Isaiah 28 we need to know who these people are it's the Israelites that are the drunkards now the Israelites weren't in the land when the Babylonians came through there was a remnant, a remnant was there, but it's for the modern day Israelites. The Israelites that won't even want to call themselves Israelites. They want to be called Christians They don't because they don't want to keep the law. They'll do anything that they can to not honor or keep the law of God or esteem the law of God, esteem the law of Allah, esteem the law of Yahweh Allah in their hearts, okay? Because they don't truly love Yahweh Allah. They want to do their own religion, their own lives, their own way rather than worship Yahweh the way he says to be worshipped, okay, through his law, all right? Okay, so, the new wine is cut off. Then in verse 8, only three verses later, Joel says to lament, quote, to lament like a virgin covered in sackcloth. So we see third day of the fifth month is new wine, followed by the ninth and tenth day of the fifth month is the fast of the fifth month, the lamenting covered in sackcloth something happens and then it's cut off they're told to lament you'll lament on the night of the ninth day of the fifth month okay and also on the tenth day of the fifth month the night time of the night the evening on and on the tenth during the daytime using a day a, a, a day sunrise start of the day slash boker start of the day so this verse 1 8 is a reference to the fast of the tenth day of the fifth month which happens on the evening of the ninth using a boker or sunrise start of the day then in verse 10 he says Joel says the new wine is dried up so there was an event that made the new wine dry up something catastrophic happened you know when nuclear bombs are going off things get vaporized so something happened that's very bad then in verse 12, it says, quote, joy is taken away from the sons of men. When, when joy is taken away, it means that we are now in the beginning of sorrows. It is time to mourn. And it is time to mourn and be remorseful of our sin. Okay? Judgment first begins. Peter said, 
judgment first begins at the house of Allah And he says, if it begins with us, speaking of the Christians, then how much more, like, okay, so it begins technically with the Christians because the Christians are the house of Allah spiritually speaking now. Okay, but the Christians, the gospel, went to the lost tribes of Israel scattered abroad. Okay, Western Christianity was that. And there were righteous Christians throughout the ages. There's always a remnant of righteous Christians that sought the truth. While there were also pagan Christians out there. Okay, that's the tares and the wheat. Anyways, judgment begins with where? When did judgment happen the first time? It began where? In Jerusalem. With the temple destruction, tenth day of the fifth month was the real judgment. Ninth, tenth day was the judgment on, that was the final judgment right there. So it wouldn't make sense that judgment, this beginning of sorrows, would start again coming up then. So when joy is taken away, we're in the beginning of sorrows. It's time to mourn and put on sackcloth, just like Joel said. And then we have to mourn and hope. Our hope now is for the oil of joy for mourning. That's a prophecy in Isaiah 61, and he's going to give us the oil of joy for mourning, beauty for ashes, okay? All right, and so that happens when on the Jubilee. So we're going to have at least like a month and 10 days to get to the Jubilee, and that, okay? So that day, the soon approaching Jubilee, so the Jubilee will be very close from when this event happens. There's so much more in the book of Joel that I'm going to go through at the end of this video. All right? Because like in Jubilee, we see the Jubilee here in Joel chapter 2. Here we see in Joel chapter 1 verse 4, before the new wine is cut off, it talks about the palmer worm hath left, the locust hath eaten. That which the locust hath eaten, the canker worm hath eaten. That which the canker worm hath eaten, the caterpillar hath eaten. Almost like parasites, you know? So what the parasites have come in to do... There's nothing basically left, Joel's saying, okay? Whatever remnant of truth that's out there, it's not there anymore. Then, because they're all drunk, they're all drunk off of wine, the spiritual fornication of wine, okay? Remember the woman that rides the beast, she has a cup, okay? Weep and howl, okay? All you uh, drinkers of wine, okay? Because the new wine, the tarosh, is cut off from your mouth. So we see the palmer worm is like that because there's just nothing left. It's time for judgment. That's what this whole thing is about. The palmer worm, the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, all these things that have been devouring the vine. Okay, Israel is the vine or devouring the uh, fig tree, right? Because in, in my house in Cyprus, we have a fig tree in the back. I see locusts come upon the fig tree. All right, uh, big old like cutters, like really big, like maybe like a grasshopper or something really big, come and eat up all the fig tree. All right, anyways, that's what's happened. Fig tree has been uh, been devoured by the palmer worm, canker worm, locust, caterpillar. There you go, or the vine has, and then we see it again in Joel two. Okay, and I will restore, restores in the Jubilee to you your, the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. That's kind of spiritualized, this great army. That's kind of interesting. So that's something to consider. I'm not saying that that's perfect interpretation, but that's thought, food for thought right there. It could be correct. There are many things on the Feast of Wine new wine that I'm going to cover in this video I'm going to share with you. I've already covered with you that you probably haven't even heard before because you're not watching my videos because you, a lot of you guys don't like me. All my brothers and sisters out there that have subscribed and have left comments and watched my videos uh, and, and are truly seeking the truth. Hello, I'm thankful for you brothers and sisters and my labor is a labor of love for you. Okay. But there's a lot of Christian heretics out there that are looking for the rapture. That's all they can think about the rapture. But they don't want to keep and guard the commandments. They have no idea what, what the truth is. Anyways, any of you Christians that are hanging around right now that are looking for the truth, that want the truth, that want to hear the truth about new wine, I have it for you. But it comes with my truths of speaking the truth about the commandments to you to make Teshuvah to turn back to the commandments. To keep the law of your God. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Yeshua said. Also, that's the same thing that was in the Ten Commandments. Okay, that's what Yahweh Allah spoke.
when he was speaking the Ten Commandments, okay? All right, showing mercy upon the thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. All right, so it's all about loving Yahweh and keeping his commandments. Okay, share, I'm going to share in this video that on the Feast of New Wine in Acts, not only did 3,000 believe the day of Pente on the day of Pentecost on New Wine, but you need to continue to read Acts chapter 3 and also all the way up to 4 verse 4 because in it we see Peter preaching a second time. And at least another 2,000 or 5,000 believe that day for a total on Pentecost of 5,000 people believed or 8,000 people believed. Okay, as I said, a lot of new wine talking heads out there who are looking for the rapture, okay, have not talked about the entire day of new wine Pentecost, okay? They're talking heads, all right? They're all looking for the rapture, okay? And you can get close and you can learn and get some truths, but then they throw in, and Barry Ah will throw in things that is false doctrine regarding your salvation. I'm going to prove it in this video. I proved it last year. I'll prove it again. So I will examine the entire day of New Wine Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And here it is right here. In verse 4, we see, all right, they spake unto the priests. This is the same day. If you read chapter 3, this is the same day. There's a little bit of interlude in chapter 3 to throw you off. But if you're really thinking about what you're reading, you will see how be it, how be it, Many of them which heard the word when Peter preached a second time, and the number of men was about 5,000. So 5,000 people got saved total. So either 3,000 more or 5,000 more for a total of 8,000. So go read Acts chapter 3, and you're going to say, oh, wow, Nick, you're right. 3,000, 5,000. And I'm not saying it pridefully. Hello, well, yeah. I give praise to Yah. My problem is not with mostly most of the viewers. I mean, I get a lot of... I'll get a lot of horrible comments from a lot of you heretic Christians out there. But the Christians out there that really want the truth, that hear this, I'm not directing this at you guys. My beef is with the teachers, the false teachers that are out there that are taking truths like new wine and giving you false doctrine. Like Barry All, who's doing it while he's talking about the Feast of New Wine, but he's keeping Halloween festivals and keeping the Feast of Satan with his children at his house every single year since he's been making these videos. It doesn't make any sense. Why? Because he has a false gospel that goes along with it. I'm exposing him in this video. I exposed him last year. I'm going to expose him again. And guys, you guys got to spread it around in the comment section on his videos that he's doing this. What don't you guys get? Okay? I'm trying to warn y'all. And what else is interesting right here is the next day, the day after the Feast of New Wine, in, Psalm, uh, in, in Acts chapter 4. So right here, verse 4, stops the day of Pentecost of new wine. Pentecost in Acts is chapter 2, verse 1, through 4, verse 4. That whole day, with a little interlude in between, is the day of Pentecost. Then down here, it came to pass on the morrow, and you know, this is all happened on the morrow, and then they're released, and they let them go, and then Peter prayed fervently a second time. And while he prayed, and when they heard it, they lifted up their voice to Allah with one accord and said, Yahweh, thou art Allah, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all them that is, that is, who by the mouth of thy servant David. So he references David. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up. And the rulers were gathered together against Yahweh and against his Messiah. So on the day following Pentecost of new wine, Peter quotes this prayer of Psalm 2. Okay, so he's quoting, they're referencing Psalm 2 in power because they got the Ruach HaKodesh. He's quoting Psalm 2. And what you don't know is that Psalm 2 is the same thing that we find in Revelation chapter 3. And in Revelation chapter 2 regarding the overcomer, okay, because it's regarding Yahweh's Messiah. And in Psalm, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Yeshua is speaking, and he promises to the overcomer he's going to get to sit on his throne as Yahweh Allah, as he's sitting on his father's throne. And you don't understand that Yahweh Allah, Yeshua has his own Messiah, who's also the servant of Yahweh, who's, his, who's the Messiah in Isaiah, the other Messiah in Isaiah. There's two Messiahs. Anyways, you haven't watched this video you're totally missing out. You have no idea what's going on. But I'm trying to make it known to you here on my channel. Hello, Yah. I'll praise to Yah. 
Also in this video, I'm going to share with you the Dead Sea Scroll date for the Feast of New Wine and test Barry Ah's date. Because Barry Ah, who has a lot more followers than mine because he's a heretic and all of you followers, most of you followers of his who subscribe to his channel are all heretics, he's giving you a date, ninth day, 10th day, the fifth month. Okay, but in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it explicitly says it's the third day of the fifth month. And as I'm gonna go and walk you through it, there's no way that we know about the Feast of New Wine if it wasn't for the Dead Sea Scrolls confirming it, verifying it, making it a theory and not a hypothesis, okay? Also in this video, I'm gonna present, excuse me, I'm gonna present my revised Exodus chronology of the events at Mount Sinai on and after New Wine. Barry All might have gotten that correct, okay? Because this year I revised my chronology and it looks like he has it correct. Great, Barry has some things correct. But when, and of course, to be a counterfeit, you have to have some truth, or else you're not gonna make yourself a good counterfeit. Barry might, but that's the thing. Then he takes the truth and he throws you a curveball, something that you don't see coming, and you accept it, you think that you have the truth and you're walking correct and living right. But really, he keeps the feast of Satan, Halloween with his family. He's been doing it year after year after year, even after I rebuked him yet last year. Okay, he's keeping the Feast of Halloween, which is the Feast of Satan, ha Satan, the adversary. He taught his children to keep the Feast of Satan. He keeps the feasts of Satan, and he's teaching you about the gospel? Yeah, right. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He's a counterfeit. Watch my video. Test what I have to say. Oh, you can get mad at me? Then go ahead, because you're a heretic too then. But if you know the truth, you're going to rejoice with me that I'm sharing this with you, freeing you of that bondage that he's trying to put you in a false gospel false doctrine that he he twists it a little bit and gives it to you feeds it to you uh you guys you guys have been falling for it for years but anyways the next test my wait wait look at my video don't be mad at me watch what i present to you looking at the timing of the chronology of the prophetic events of joel i already went through chapter one i'm going to go through more also, I'm going to talk about new wine in the book of Proverbs. Oh, there's some serious stuff in here about pouring out the Spirit on you. But they rejected to have the Spirit poured out into them, poured into them, and poured out like wine into them. But they didn't want it to happen. That didn't happen two thousand over 2,000 years ago, or two thousand about 2,000 years ago, on the Pentecost of Acts chapter 2. They, they received it, but now, now at this time, People ain't receiving the truth. And then also I'm going to remember the covenant of salt and the Dead Sea Scrolls. Like I said, the salt has lost its saltiness. So the Feast of New Wine and Pentecost and Acts, as I said, either 2,000, another 2,000 or 5,000 believed, bringing it to a total of 5,000 or 8,000 believed on that day. Peter preached a second time. Will there be a second outpouring later on? Maybe. Also, in the Feast of New Wine, I found something as I was reading through Exodus just recently. Wow, this is huge. In Exodus, on the day, the Feast of Wine, when the Levites killed 3,000 of their sons and brothers, okay, Moses promised they killed them who had participated in the golden calf worship, which might have been a homosexual orgy, okay? In the Greek, it says that they were playing naked, I believe in the Greek Septuagint, and likely we're talking about men here that were doing it, okay? So it's possible that that's what it was. Whatever the case may be, could have been a heterosexual orgy. We don't know, they were dancing and naked. What is that about? Whatever the case might be, they got killed for it, and it was such a bad sin that they got killed for it, okay? The sons of Levi then would later become the Kohanim and the Levites. And there was a special, Moses on that day, after they killed 3,000, at the end of that day, Moses promised on new wine, promised a special gift and blessing to the sons of Levi. And I don't know if that gift has been fulfilled or not. Has it been gifted? I don't know. So there will be a gift given to the sons of Levi, and I don't know what that gift will be. I have a gift for the sons of Levi right now in my video coming up. Okay, right here, Exodus chapter 32, right here. This is after they Moses broke the tablets. They were around dancing naked and playing. The people were naked. 
possibly that might be masculine, might be speaking of the men. I'm not certain, might be hetero, might be men and women. I don't know. Got to look at the Greek Septuagint. It's better. Okay, Moses grounded up the thing, made him drink it, the, the, the stuff, then told all the people, told the Levites to gather themselves. Okay, thus says God, well, Allah, Haim of Israel, put every man on his sword, by his sword, by his side, and go in, out from the gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion. I don't know if that is a male companion. Okay, person that, okay, they had gay sex with, and every man his neighbor. Okay, and the children, I don't know if those are masculine. I haven't taken a look at that. Very well could be. And the children of Levi did accordingly to the word of Moses. And there fell, fell of the people that day around 3,000 men. For Moses had said, consecrate yourself to, to Yahweh, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow a, upon you a blessing this day. What day? Third day of the fifth month, possibly. Third day of the fifth month which would be the Feast of New Wine, because in the Greek Septuagint, it said that he heard not a voice of war, but a voice of them that start the banquet of wine. Okay, that might have been inter, uh, seen into there. Barry came up with that. Other people might have also had that typology. Whatever, but what I know is what is the special gift for the sons of Levi? Okay. All right, here it talks about them in Malachi. I'm going to send my messenger. He shall prepare the way before me. And Yahweh whom you seek shall suddenly come into his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith Yahweh of hosts. Yahweh Savo'ok, but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appear? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi Purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto Yahweh an offering of a offering in righteousness. Okay, and it dawned on me for them to offer a offering in righteousness, they have to have the uh, David. He created the priestly order, and it has been lost with the calendar. So for them to offer an offering of righteousness, they need to get back on the restored calendar. Okay. Because there was two orders. You have the order of the Kohanim, and then you have the order of the Levite singers. I don't know the name in Hebrew. I talked about it in another video. Okay. So when I restored the, uh, the Jubilee count, okay, what I did was I took the restored 364-day calendar that's solar calibrated, not, that does not use the Gregorian days of the week, that does not have the leap week, okay, and I found a very something interesting. I announced this in my video of my calendar video at the beginning of this year. But what I did was when I restored the chronology using the Babylonian tablets, 4956, and uh, the restored Jubilee count and the restored chronology of the Israelites Exodus of 1407 and 1406, a 1406 entrance into Canaan, spring 1406 entrance into Canaan. What I did was I found the year that likely that um, Solomon dedicated his temple right here at uh, uh, six, 960 to 959 BC. And then I read, I read the chronology of 2 Chronicles 7, 2, 6, and 8. And there's also, there's a variant, two different variants of chronology between that and uh, 2 Kings. But I went with Second Chronicles, Chronicles because it seemed more authentic than Second Kings. First Kings seems okay. Second Kings doesn't seem okay. Um, so I went in the chronology, or was it uh, First Kings has some chronology problems? It looks like. Anyways, I went with this right here, uh, 589 BC on the 29th Sabbath of the year. Why the 29th Sabbath of the year? Because that is when uh, that's the that Sabbath week is the Sabbath week that starts during the Feast of Sukkot after Solomon uh, dedicated the temple for four days. There are many priests working. It says that the priestly order had yet to start. So all the priests were serving the first four or five days. The temple was open. And then I imagine when would the priestly order start start during the week of uh, Sukkot? during the week of tabernacles. That Sabbath is what I picked 
I then put Jehoraheb here. It turned out that on the 29th Sabbath of the year, if you were to put place the priest to start there, the priestly order to start, it goes 24 Sabbaths for the 24 priestly orders, and then the new year begins, and then you go and you do the and then you do the chronology. Then you do the 24. You let it run. 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 And then it starts over. So literally every six years, it automatically starts over using 52 Sabbath weeks per year and not having an intercalated year like the false Gregorian 364 day calendar has. My calendar is non Gregorian, does not use the Gregorian days of the week. Ken Johnson, he uses the Gregorian days of the week, which is a modern invention. And what they do, they they do it like the Dead Sea part of the Dead Sea Scrolls have it, where they think that they add an extra week. But that doesn't get the repetitive cycle like we see here, which is absolutely perfect. 24 courses, because David knew that it would start here and that it would be a perfect cycle every seventh year the cycle would reset perfectly. Every six years, one, two, three, four, five, six year, the cycle would completely reset right here and here. So just so you know, if I did this correct, hello, we yeah, I'll praise to yeah, this seems like the most logical, conclusive thing. I believe this is restored now. So just so you know, guys, the priestly order this year, it restarted this year right here, Jehoraheb, of the Cohen priests and also Joseph's family of the Levites. It started right here, restart during Sukkot last year. So the beginning of the, ecclesi the uh, ecclesiastical year right here uh, at the beginning of the first Sabbath on the fourth, fourth day of the first month, the first Sabbath of the year, which was Gregorian March 24th, 2024. For the Western world, for for all the location on Earth except for the Americas, okay, the Americas. Your day started a day earlier this year on the calendar because it's solar calibrated, and the time zone, the international dateline rotates um, every year, it rotates over a quarter. So because it's a 0.24 days, so there you have it. This year is uh, this year was the beginning of this feast, and it started a whole new cycle again. It just started again. Hello, Yah, the Zadok priestly order, and the singers, the Levites, the singers, your orders just restarted at the beginning of this year. Hello, Yah, so you can have temple service accordingly to the correct calendar, to the correct date, so you can offer an offering of righteousness. So, the day of the Feast of New Wine, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, New Wine in the Dead Sea Scrolls, even though the Bible alludes to there being the Feast of New Wine, because it talks about the grain, wine, and oil, and it lose that there is a first fruits festival of new wine. The only reason that we know for a fact it exists and when it exists is because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. If it weren't for the Dead Sea Scrolls, we would not be talking about the Feast of New Wine, how we're talking about it today, how Christian heretics are talking about it today, looking for a rapture, okay, not caring about Yahweh's feast, not caring about Yahweh's laws not caring about the truth that they're likely possibly Israelites, not caring about those things, okay? The following are Dead Sea Scroll facts about the Feast of New Wine, okay? So again, let's all agree, if we didn't have the Dead Sea Scrolls, we would not be talking about the Feast of New Wine, correct? Yes, that's true. In the way that we're talking about it now, we would not be talking about that, all right? There would be no discussion, and that's the problem that I have. Barry wants to talk about New Wine, but he wants to give you his idea of the calendar, not what was in the Dead Sea Scrolls, okay? 364-day calendar. All right, so new wine in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Again, the Temple Scroll tells us how to count the three Shavuot Pentecad first fruits festivals of the wheat, the new wine, and the new oil, counting seven Sabbaths and then numbering the following day 50. It's right here. Count seven Sabbaths, then from this festival of, of the grain, and then... Count seven Sabbaths the following day. Number 50 is the 50th day of the new wine. That's how it works, okay? Offer a third and a hit of wine. Don't forget the covenant of salt. Here in this Dead Sea Scroll, the calendar, calendar, calendrical scroll, 4Q325, it pegs the date of, of new wine to the third day of what? The third day of the fifth month, okay, of the fifth month, 
On the second of the fifth month is a Sabbath. And on the third of it, it being the fifth month, is the festival of new wine. It gives us a date for the month of new wine. But Derry all wants to tell you all it's on the ninth of Av. What are we doing? All right. Are we using the truth or are we coming up with our own ideas? He comes up with his own ideas because he's a heretic against Yahweh Allah laws. He comes on here with his Bible trying to show off how much it's marked up and talk about how he, uh, God, Allah, God won't tell anything, do anything unless he tells his servants the prophets. He says he's a servant and he's a prophet, yet he keeps the feast of Satan, Halloween with his family and his children. Are we seriously, or how stupid are you guys to follow this guy? What are you thinking? He thinks that he thinks that knowing God's word is knowing God. No, okay? He thinks knowing God's word is loving God. The most best Bible scholars out there know the Bible, but it doesn't mean that they love God. Yahweh Allah Haim says it in his commandments that he shows mercy unto the thousands of them that love him and guard his commandments which means that you love God by guarding his commandments and what, doing what he says to do. Not learn the way of the heathen. Not keep the feast of Satan Halloween. Not watch Disney movies with your family and pollute yourself with all of that uh, pollution of Disney movies, perverting your kids' minds, allowing these perverts to put in secret messages and pervert your kids' minds. Hello, what yeah. And I can say that because my children have never watched my children, as Yahweh liveth, my children have never watched a Disney movie in their entire life. Hello, hello, yah, as Yahweh liveth. Okay, so all y'all, you can't, you got to repent if you allowed your children to watch Disney movies. You need to tell them that you have failed them and repent to Yahweh your Allah and tell your children that it was wrong. They've been perverted in their mind by these things and this evil world, okay? That's why you see homosexuality on the rise. That's why you see all these things on the rise. It's because of the perversion that you've allowed that let happen because there's no more salt and light, okay? And it's been systematically America and the Western civilizations, that America was born out of the Western civilizations, okay? They have been subverted okay by who do you think subverted them go look at who owns all of these mega corporations you've been subverted people and you don't even know and you're sad sad there's so many sad people out there weak men weak men okay been been weakened by pornography weakened by sports weakened and beaten down by these movies and allowing your kids this perversion and music and television and all the bullshit sin that's out there. It's been, you buy, you guys, it, it's, that's what the caterpillar is eating. There's nothing really left, guys. It's just the truth. Okay, so new wine in the Dead Sea Scrolls, like I said. And guys, all you gotta do is just repent, admit to it, admit to it, repent, and go forward, okay? Get the strength of the spirit in the rock and go forward. That's it. Confess your sin to Yahweh, your Allah, it's that simple. That's all he wants Barry Ah to do. That's what all he wants these Christian teachers to do, is to be honest about their sin. But you know what? They want to have their Jesus. They want to have their cake and eat it too. They want their Jesus. They want their Disney. They want their Jesus. They want their movies. They want their Jesus. Barry Ah wants his comic books. You want your Jesus. You want... Uh, you want your pornography, you want whatever you want, you can get because you're in America. You can have anything you want almost. And even the stuff that's illegal, you can get. But you want your Jesus and you want all that stuff. You've been weakened. And that's the whole point. Israelite men became weakened in when they were in the wilderness. There was the Arabs were living among the Israelites, a mixed multitude. They murmured against Yahweh first, and then the Israelites murmured. Okay, Israelites are easy to weaken, and we see that right now if the Western peoples be the Israelite culture, which likely they are, because they carried on Christianity. Anyways, anyhow, all right, just repent. That's all Yahweh wants you to do. It's that simple. Repent, be remorseful. Repent, be remorseful, and then do what you're supposed to do. Man up. 
man up and do what's right. That's why I can say my children don't eat fast food. My children don't drink sodas, okay, petrochemical sodas. They're not eating fake food. They're not watching crap television that's programming them with all of the perversions, okay, that we were programmed with and perverted with. I don't let my children do any of that. Haven't watched a Disney movie their entire life. Hello, we got. You should be doing the same. If you haven't, you need to repent and tell your children and correct them. And it's going to be a hard time to correct them, but you need to do what you do because life depends on it. But you don't, a lot of people don't understand that. Anyways, here we go. New wine of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Here all, okay, this is the calendar in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Three times in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it says the calendar, a full year, 364 days. Dead Sea Scroll here. And the year is complete, 364 days. And he wrote Psalms, speaking of David, for all the days of the year, 364. So three places in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it tells us the year is 364 days. A lunar calendar is 354 days, unless you get the lunar month, and you have to add on another, what, 29 days or something. So it's like 354 plus the leap month every third year, whatever you guys do, or 30 days, whatever that is. It's not 364, like the calendar says, which means that the calendar is a solar calibrated calendar, not a lunar calendar. But people are so stubborn, stick to their false traditions and their own illogical ideas. You want to talk about new wine, but you want to put it on a lunar Sabbath calendar that's not even in the Dead Sea Scrolls? Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what Barry Oz teaching. Lunar calendar. Wake up, people. Wake up. You've been deceived. All right? He's the Pied Piper. He sings, he dances. That's exactly what Yeshua said about John. When John came around, remember, in the, the kids in the um, marketplace, they wanted John to dance. They wanted John, they wanted the prophet to sing, and they wanted the prophet to dance, to sing a song, to act, to cry, <laughs> to laugh and dance and to do all of that. But John didn't come doing that. But Barry all did, and you guys all are going for it. Y'all fallen for it. Y'all fell for it. Okay? Because he preaches a false gospel. I preach the eternal gospel. The eternal gospel has no beginning or end. In the book of Revelation, the eternal gospel is to fear Allah and keep his commandments. Well, he doesn't say keep the commandments, but that's what he means, and I'm going to explain it to you, okay? Say with a loud voice, fear Allah and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him, Allah that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters. How does how do you worship Yahweh Allah by keeping his commandments, Christians? That's how you do it. Duh. In Ecclesiastes, the eternal gospel that's preached, he's, uh, Solomon tells us the whole. He wraps up the sum of the matter is to fear Allah and keep his commandments. The whole duty of man. What don't you get that keeping the commandments is what Yahweh wants us his people to do? Okay, and to be zealous for it, to do it, but do it the right way, not according to the false Jewish traditions, because they're not the true Israelites, but to do it with a soft heart, not a stony rock heart. Okay, that's what it's about. But Barry All will tell you his own idea of grace while he keeps the feast of Satan. What do you guys think? Are you guys stupid? I swear you've been deceived. Hopefully this wakes you up, okay? Why am I hitting right here my pineal gland? Hopefully you guys hit your pineal gland and wake up spiritually because you guys have no idea what's going on. You've all been deceived by a Pied Piper teaching you the false things, okay? So here we go again, the festivals of Yahweh. Now these three are not in Leviticus 23. All the other ones are called the Feast of Yahweh. The wood offering is not in, that's also not in Leviticus 23. But these are all feasts. In Judges chapter 21 or 24, whatever it was, it talks about there was a feast of, to Yahweh in Shiloh, and then it, it was they were in the vineyard. So obviously it's alluding to the feast of new wine. So this is how you do it according to the Dead Sea Scrolls with the dates in the Dead Sea Scrolls. 26th day of the first month is the barley wave sheaf, which is on the first day of the week. You count seven Sabbaths. You number the following day, 50. brings you to the 15th day of the third month, which is the 50th day. 
which is the first fruits festival of the week, which is also Shavuot, the festival of covenants, according to the book of Jubilees, which is first day of the week. You count seven Sabbaths, number the following day, 50. It's new wine, which is on uh, which is on the first day of the week, the 50th day is on the first day of the week. And then from this day, because it's first day of the week, we count seven weeks or seven Sabbaths. You remember the following day, 50. It brings us to the festival of new oil, which is on the 22nd day of the sixth month. And that's how it goes. The instructions to count the first fruit of new wine and new oil and their dates are only found in the Dead Sea Scrolls on the Dead Sea Scroll calendar. 364 days. Anybody telling you it's a lunar Sabbath calendar, they should not be talking about the Feast of New Wine and the Feast of Oil because this goes with those documents, okay? What don't we get? It's that simple, that logical. It goes together. You can't take it and separate it. It goes together, and that's just what it is. 364-day calendar. Check it out. There's a lot of false versions of the 364-day calendar, like Ken Johnson and like many others that are out there. I believe and I teach and I understand that the true calendar does not use the Gregorian, Gregorian days of the week, which are seven continual days that keep going. That was established by Constantine, okay, or sometime right before Constantine with Rome. That's a, an invention of man. But rather, I believe they're the great sign on the earth, which is the spring equinox. When you get the spring equinox, that is a sign to start the new year the following day. The day begins on the fourth day of the week. That means the fourth day of the first month is always on a Sabbath, and the days are established. The day on the fourth day, well, the first day of the first month is on the fourth day of the week. The day of the sun, moon, and stars were created, and I believe that the sun, moon, and stars were created and set in place the day, the position after the first position after the equinox day, and that the equinox is the day out of time. Okay, we hear about that in pagan. I, uh, new Age, the day out of time, and that's how the calendar works. They stole that concept of a day out of time concept, but it belongs here in this calendar. Just as the Zoroastrianism, they stole the eternal fire of Noah, and they stole that concept and perverted it. Same thing, there was perversion in this calendar. So that's it. The calendar is not for rapture junkies to get their fix. It's for the people of Yahweh to have the restored calendar so they can celebrate the holy and kodesh for his kodesh people that want to desire to desire to worship yahweh allahim yahweh their allahim on his holy kodesh sabbaths and new months and festivals and also his fast days okay which are going to turn into feasts of joy coming up so we are now on all the same page right if you got this far congratulations we are all on the same page that without the dead sea scrolls no one would be talking about the First Fruits Festival of New Wine that we are talking about now on YouTube. This is how it looks. New Wine is right here on the third day of the fifth month. And the fast of the fifth month, according to Zechariah chapter 8, there's the fast of the fourth month, fast of the fifth month, fast of the seventh month, which is uh, Yom Kippurim. And then the fast of the tenth month, the fast of the fourth, fifth, and tenth month have to do with the Babylonian siege the breaking through of the siege, and then the destruction of Jerusalem. The destru and if you read in Jeremiah 52, the siege was laid on the 10th day of the 10th month. That's the fast of the 10th month. The siege later broke through on the 9th day of the 4th month. That's when the king, Jehoiah, escaped with his sons and went out, and they were captured over there by in the valley by Jericho, and then brought up to Ribla, had it uh, killed, uh, Nebuchadnezzar killed his son, three sons and then put out the king's eyes and sent him in shackles to uh, Babylon. So the fast of the fourth month is on the ninth day of the fourth month when the Babylonian siege broke through in Jerusalem. Then Nebuchadnezzar returned on like the ninth day of the fifth month and then the temple was destroyed and everything was destroyed and burnt down on the tenth day of the fifth month. So the tenth day of the fifth month is the fast of the fifth month which begins on the evening of the night, the day before. So you got the fast of those three days. That's what the fasts are all about. So that's what this fast is about. It makes no sense that Barry Odd teaches that the uh, New Wine Festival, which is supposed to be this joyous festival, a libation with alcohol and people drinking some wine, some new wine, okay, some delicious, sweet new wine, and having this festival to be mourning. 
It makes no sense to do that, to mourn, to drink, to mourn. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that at all, to do that on the 10th day of the 5th month. It makes no sense at all. These are two different set festivals, okay? So, the origin of the Feast of New Wine being identified as Pentecost of Acts chapter 2. Again, I've been. this is my 7th year discussing new wine. I put videos out since 2018. This is 2024, 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. This is my seventh year putting out videos on new wine. Hello, well, yeah. Okay, I first put out some new wine videos in Jerusalem. I've uh, been celebrating this family with my family since Jerusalem. And the origin that new wine is the Pentecost of Acts was by a person named Mema Jeanette. That's her YouTube channel. Five years ago, she put it in, my, she commented in my video that the Pentecost of Acts 2 is the Feast of New Wine. This is before Barry Ah came up with his idea that it was. Barry Ah was watching my channel at the time. He had not yet started YouTube at the time. Mema Jeanette put this thing out here. The Feast of New Wine is the Pentecost. The New Wine Day Feast in the Old Testament is Pentecost in Acts. Hello, I pinned it. This is it. You have it there. You've seen it there first. That's the origin. I don't know anyone else that said it before she did, talking about it like that. Maybe other people did. I'll give them the credit if they see it. I'm always down to give people their due and give them their credit. I'm not here to take anybody's things that were given to them. I always try to name source certain things. Barry came up with some good ideas. He said the wine was poured out and the spirit, like the wine's poured out into, this, into the believers there. There you go. But guess what? Guys, deceivers have to have truth. To be a counterfeit, you have to have some truth. Okay, that's just how it works. And Barry, we want you to repent. I want you to repent. You got a lot, you got to repent, Barry. You got to teach your children the truth. Things don't, things will never get done by being like how you're being. Two-faced, Barry. Just won't happen. So Jeanette did it. Here you go. July 19th was when I put out that video. She put it on, like maybe like in a couple of days, she put that out. Okay, so here we are. Today is now July 22nd, and here's my video from five years ago in 2019. You can see the date for it is July 19th, 2019. I'm going to scroll right down here to my pinned comment, and you can see her comment is now today. It's five years ago. So just a couple of days ago, it was four years old. She might have left this comment literally on the day of new wine. She said the new wine feast in the Old Testament is Pentecost in Acts. That was five years ago today or, or, or yesterday or the day before. So it was like right on New Wine. I think she did it within a couple of days of New Wine or on New Wine. She did it. So hello, yeah. She was the one who broke it. And it was done right here on my video. Hello, yeah. So at the time of Jeanette's comment in July 2019, there was only a handful of videos. Barry hadn't started his channel. And, and again, but Barry does, he's mentioned me about my things about new wine. He's also mentioned my calendar right here. Barry, in this video, he says my calendar, my 364 day calendar is correct. Hello, yeah. I, I don't take any, I don't take any pride that I'm correct. It just is correct. But I got to give praise to yeah, hello, yeah. But Barry says mine is the correct 364 calendar. Well, he continues to teach his own idea of the calendar. Whatever. Here you can watch it for yourself. Okay. So, this is another discrepancy. Again, Nick uh, uh, has done excellent work on the Enoch calendar. I personally believe there is an Enoch calendar. And uh, his work on it, he's exactly accurate. I still believe that God is following the calendar he gave us. Sun, moon, and stars, start your year in a beeb. Okay, so like I said, okay, Barry is on a lunar Sabbath calendar. It doesn't make sense. You can't do it. It just doesn't go together. And we've already all, already all agreed that without the Dead Sea Scrolls, no one would be talking about the First Fruits Festival of New Wine that we're talking about now. And it has, you have to have the Dead Sea Scroll calendar to go 364-day calendar to be talking about New Wine. He gave you a false day of New Wine. You're all looking at the wrong dates and all of that. So again, here's the test. All right. Dead Sea Scrolls said they pegged the date of New Wine to the third day of the fifth month. The calendar type is Solar Sabbath, 364 days. That's what the Dead Sea Scrolls say. Barry Ah, he says the date of new wine is on the ninth day of the fifth month, ninth of all. 
he says the calendar is the lunar Sabbath calendar, which is 354 days. Okay, this is the comparison right now, the comparison in the test. Burial right here, okay, or the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scroll date is true, third day of the fifth month, solar Sabbath, 364 day calendar. Barry's Oz date is false. It's that simple. You cannot take this idea of new wine from the Dead Sea Scrolls, that's, that's verified in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and then put it on a lunar Sabbath calendar that's not in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Doesn't work like that, okay? And by the way, this is a picture of Halloween 2019 at Barry Oz's Halloween party at his family's house. She dressed up as a two-faced half dog, half himself. This is it right here, really. Half dog, half himself. Barry Oz, right? With his family at his house. And if you care about Barry Oz, don't get mad at me. Call him to repent from keeping Halloween, the feast of Satan, with which he has taught to all of his children, his young child, right? Taught him all this feast. I called Barry to repent about this years ago. Over four years ago, I called Barry to repent. Warned you all four years ago. Barry continues to celebrate Halloween with his family and won't repent of it. At the same time, he's looking for the rapture and he's trying to tell you all that you guys are all going to get raptured with him. Boy, you guys are not smart. Unless you guys are uh, hate the truth and you guys love a lie. But that's just the way that I see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong and I can't see it. Here's a here's a screenshot of his daughter. It's public on Facebook right here. November 20. She posted it November 1st. She was quick to post the picture from the day before 2022. Okay. Of them celebrating Halloween. Okay. Family gathering Halloween. Okay. And this is last Halloween 2023. We're now in 2024. Halloween 2024 is not for a few months more. This is last Halloween. This is Barry's like daughter-in-law or something on her public Facebook page. November 1st, they're quick to post their Halloween photos. After midnight, they're posting it. 2023, Barry Oz, October 31st, 2023 Halloween party. He calls all of his YouTube viewers, his family. Family, did he invite you to his Halloween party with his other family? A.K.A. the Feast of Satan. Here's his son-in-law throwing up devil horns. His devil horn, Baphomet horns right here. Here's his daughter who he gave, he gave his daughter to this man right here, this Satanist right here, to throw up the devil horns. Come on, who's giving their daughter to a Satanist, to marry a Satanist? Oh my goodness, Barry, oh, wake up, dude. What have you done? Are you, you're so blind. You either, hey, Yahweh Allahim, and you won't come true about your sin. Just admit your sin and fear Yahweh and repent and try to save your house if you can. And if they can, be saved. Because she now doesn't belong to you, Barry. She belongs to her satanic husband here. Throwing up the devil signs at your Feast of Satan party you're throwing on at your house. This is your house, Barry, right here. This is your other son. You guys are all getting down on Halloween. Keeping the Feast of Satan. Never seen Barry all keep Passover with unleavened bread with his family or any of the other feasts of Yahweh, but he's definitely down. They're about it and down to keep the feast of Satan. But he won't invite all of his raptured Christian family to his Halloween party because it would tell a lot about him because he doesn't want to come to the light. But I'm trying to call you to the light, Barry. Repent. It's that simple. Just repent, be remorseful, sackcloth and ashes, Barry. Save yourself, and then hopefully you can save your sons and your daughters, or else it's going to be just like what you got going on, okay? Feast of Satan party, all right? Yahweh wants people that are going to worship him in spirit and in truth, okay? His feast, his word is truth. The, the word like Leviticus, the feast of Yahweh, Leviticus 23, those are true feasts, Okay, the feast of Satan is the way of the pagans, the way of the heathens. And that's what you got going on at your house, Barry. That's what you got going on right here, Barry. Look at you like a dumb dog. His watchmen are all blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. 
They cannot bark. That means they can't speak. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. You can never have enough viewers, Barry. You can never have enough attention, Barry. You're doing it for attention. You're doing it for viewership. They're all shepherds that cannot understand. You cannot understand the truth. You're too busy keeping the feast of Satan. They all look to their own way. The feast of Satan is your own way, Barry. Comic books is your own way, okay? Everyone from for his game. You don't want money, Barry. You want attention. You want people to like you and laugh at you, and you want attention from his quarter. Oh, this is your quarter from your own house. All these rapture watchers, people out there that say, he does, at least he doesn't want people's money. I give Barry all uh, that. I don't take money or gifts. I don't ask for it. I don't take it. You got all these other rapture people out there, Christians out there. They're all telling you, giving you promises of the rapture while they're asking for money, looking for their own gain from their own quarter, doing it from their own house, trying to get money and get donations from you, broadcasting on YouTube from their own house, trying to get money. How pathetic is that? That's just straight pathetic. All right? So look, Barry Awe, uh, and why are they called dumb dogs? If you look at this chapter in the chapter, because they won't keep Yahweh's Sabbath and they won't take hold of the covenant by keeping the commandments of Allah Haim, the Ten Commandments. They won't do it. I did a video about Sandy Armstrong, dumb dog Sandy Armstrong, over four years ago. The sons of the stranger that joined themselves, it's all about keeping the Sabbath day, guys about keeping, which is a feast of Yahweh. That's the first feast of Yahweh, is keeping the Sabbath. It's about taking hold of his covenant, keeping the commandments. If you love me, keep the commandments. The commandments are not kept to gain salvation. But if you love Yahweh and you're forgiven by trusting in the blood of Messiah Yeshua, and you have that grace, you're given time to repent and do what's right, turn from your sin and do what's right. You're called from practicing, from called from repenting from practicing of keeping the feast of Satan like Barry's doing to keeping his Sabbath days from keeping the pagan Sunday the best day you understand okay Sunday Saturday Sabbath Saturday is Gregorian day it's the best we understood at the time from keeping the pagan holidays to keeping Yahweh's holidays from keeping the days of the heathen right here like Barry the heathen Barry the heathen awe all right to keeping Yahweh's feast days, okay? His watchmen are all are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. They can't speak and tell you. They're not going to tell you when the rapture is going to be. They're sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. That's it. This is what you see. Barry, repent. Everybody else there, repent. Sackcloth and ashes time, guys. Now, new wine's about to be cut off. Come, they say. I will fetch wine right here. What's in your cup, Barry? I bet it's wine. And we will fill ourselves with strong drink. What you doing, Barry? Strong drink is that polluted doctrine that he teaches. Spiritual wine, spiritual strong drink is that false doctrine that they're teaching. That's what these blind watchmen, these dumb dog watchmen, like Barry All right here. Look at him. What a dumb dog right there doing. Wake up, Barry. Repent. I love you. Please repent for your own sake and hopefully the sake of your household and your son-in-law and maybe your daughter you've given over to a Satanist. What are you doing? Why would you give your daughter to a Satanist? Makes no sense. He obviously serves Satan. And the way that you do the gospel ain't the gospel. He will never be saved by seeing your two-facedness. Barry, your two-faced right here. Perfect Halloween outfit for you, Barry. Half dog, half human. You're two-faced. You're two-faced to the truth. You say you know the Bible and you brag. You, you put a slight brag in it, how you mark up your Bible. You read it so much. You know all these types, but you don't know about the feasts, about doing what's right and keeping the commandments. You can't even, you don't even have the understanding to know that you're keeping the feast of Satan. You don't have the understanding that you gave your daughter over to marry a Satanist. Come on, man. She's under the covering of a Satanist, which means she's not covered. What are you thinking? You're just, you, you got royally screwed up. And I hope that you repent. So, the Feast of New Wine in Proverbs. And no, I'm not going to give my daughter to a Satanist. I've already told my daughter, okay? I've already told my daughter she's going to marry a righteous man. I would never give my daughter or any, any of my two daughters, I have two daughters, never give them over to a Satanist. 
They're going to marry a man who's keeping the commandments. And all you Christians out there would say, oh, he's a heretic. I'd rather have, in the eyes of these false Christians out there that call commandment keepers heretics, they're the, ri they're the righteous. The righteous kept the commandments. John, John the Baptist, his parents were righteous before Yahweh because they kept the commandments. You guys, are, Christians are so stupid and blind because they want to keep, they, they, because they'll do anything to keep the commandments. They'll do anything to recognize that they're Israelites, that they've sinned, truly sinned before Yahweh. They're not true about their own sin. They try to hide all of their own fornications, all of their own uh, 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 sexual immorality, all of their own uh, harlotries, and all of their own sins, and they don't want to be honest with their sins, with themselves, with their spouses, with Yahweh, their Allah, they'd rather hide it, pretend, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm good, grace, doesn't work like that. Repent. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with your Allah. Be honest with your spouses. Be honest with everybody. And go forward in Yahweh's mercy and grace and his blessing. So the new wine in Proverbs, wisdom crieth without, she shudder, uttereth her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long will you simple ones, will ye love simplicity? How long will you simple Christians love simplicity? That's what wisdom is saying. And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. This is what wisdom is saying, because Christians aren't wise. Christians are unwise. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit. That's the feast of new wine in Acts chapter 2. They had The believers had this spirit poured out on them, just like Barry says, like wine being poured into a glass. Pour your spirit onto you, okay? I will make known my words unto you, but you first have to turn, repent, teshuva, at Yahweh's reproof. He reproves every single person. If you never have reproof in your life, something's not right. If you never receive reproof, something's not right. Maybe you were brought up righteous, but still you could have wrong thoughts. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Because ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. I think all you raptured Christians out there might not, there might not be this escape that you've been hoping for, and your calamity and fear might come because you guys didn't make the escape because you didn't, you guys rejected knowledge and the, and the commandments. Your fear as, cometh as desolation. Fear cometh as desolation, so it's gonna, this, something's going to happen that's going to cause desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. What happens when those nuclear weapons blow up creates whirlwinds. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, when they see the nuclear ICBM missiles coming down, possibly, okay? Then they shall call on me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and chose not the fear of Yahweh, okay? They would, none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. For whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet for, from fear of evil. So maybe whoever hearkens unto wisdom is going to dwell safely and not worry about the fear of evil. Okay, This is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 through 33. At the beginning of chapter, Proverbs chapter 1, we see the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, forsake not the law of thy mother. Okay? The instruction, the Torah of thy father, and not the law, the mitzvah of thy mother. Oh, you're legalistic. Proverbs chapter 1 is legalistic, Christians. Rip it out, quick. It's legalistic. Okay? We're not to keep the law of God. Woo! No, the sacrificial system's done away with. Okay? There's no place to do sacrifice. Now we offer the sacrifice of praise of our lips. But still we're called to keep the commandments. Abraham kept the commandments before the Ten Commandments were even given. He kept Yahweh's law, statutes, and commandments. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Solomon has a son. Solomon has a son of wisdom. And that is the second Messiah. 
Then he says, My son, forget not my law, but keep thy command, but let, let thine heart keep my commandments. Guys, got to keep the commandments. And then he talks about giving the first fruits of the substance of thine increase, that thy barn shall be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out new wine. Okay? What new wine? The new wine of the Ruach. That's the real new wine. You want that bursting out. You want that pouring forth. Bursting out new wine out of your wineskin, out of your body. Giving up that wisdom and understanding, the fear of Yahweh, preaching the commandments, keeping the commandments, and having fellowship. But that's not according to Berial. That's not according to Christianity. It's not according to all you heretic Christians out there. So, guys, this video is long enough. Look, Barry might have got the Exodus chronology correct. I revised it on my calendar. You can go to my calendar and take a look. Also take a look at my chronology for John, Luke, and Acts. I color-coded it this year in this new new version. If you had, I just re-updated my calendar, so go to my website, enochcalendar.com, to get this, or, or click the link in the description to get access to this calendar. You can download it. There's links to download it. The blue is the chronology of the Exodus up to Mount Sinai and at Mount Sinai. That leads up to new wine. So it starts before new wine when they arrived at Mount Sinai on like the 15th day of the third month. And then you can follow it forward to so just go to the 15th day of the third month. And you can read everything in blue and scroll forward all the way up to this day to the uh, fourth day of the fifth month when Noah. And actually the fifth day of the fifth month when Moses went back up the mountain with the law. He had to go back or back up to get the tablets a second time, written down a second time. So go ahead and check that out. Also, this is the red. Uh, it starts on, I think, on Passover because it is uh, dealing with the Passover, the resurrection. Uh, there were two. It appears to me that there were two ascensions of Messiah Yeshua made two ascensions into heaven, which is very interesting that there would be two. So check that out. Also, okay, it's in red, starting at uh, Passover and work all your way down to New Wine and the day after New Wine for that. And then the red chronology is the Acts chronology. It starts up here in, um, uh, starts at the Passover and goes on to Acts chapter 4, verse 4, and here and here at the end right here. So check out this in my calendar. It does look like, Moses came, possibly came down according to the Boker. This is calibrated according to the Boker. This is my chronology last year. Okay. Um, okay. We don't know if the Israelites had new wine. They were led in the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxing upon thy foot. You have not eaten bread, nor have you drunk wine or strong drink, that you might know that I am Yahweh, your Allah, Haim. So the Israelites didn't have wine or strong drink while they're in the wilderness. That's not to say that they didn't bring wine or strong drink out with them on their way to Sinai. We don't know if that'd be the case, okay? Um, because it says they ate uh, there, and then they rose up, they ate and drank and rose up to the play. So we don't know if, what they were rising up to play with, if they had wine up to that point, and then after that, that was it. Okay, that, so the golden calf event might have been the last of the new wine that they had there in the wilderness. Here you can see Moses said in the Greek Septuagint, uh, the voice of them that began the banquet, the banquet is implied of new wine, the feast of new wine, or the feast of wine do I hear? Not new wine, but wine do I hear? Okay, so that's something in the Septuagint. I like the Septuagint in the uh, first five books uh, are superior than the Masoretic first five chapters. Okay. These be thy gods, O Israel, that brought thee up out of the land. What brought them out? They were pulled by oxen. They were pulled by ox. Their carts were pulled by oxen. The Israelites' carts were pulled by oxen. I just spent the last two months in Egypt. I went up to the Nile. I went up to the Nile um, land of Goshen. They have oxen there, okay, because they have to work in that thick mud in the fields there, whether it be rice fields or grain fields, whatever, the fields that be there. They were in the fields. Oxen are pulling the plows through the uh, the land. They had oxen. They, the Israelites took their oxen and put carts to the oxen. They would have had carts to put all the produce from the fields onto carts that were then pulled by the oxen. So the Israelites took the carts and had the oxen connected to the carts. They did all the work in the field, and they the, and the oxen. 
pulled all the Israelites and their children and all their stuff, their tents and everything and their belongings with them on the carts and pulled them through the Exodus through that. So literally, when, when Aaron said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, literally they were worshiping the creation, the oxes, and giving the oxes the credit for bringing them out rather than Yahweh. They did the miracles that brought them out, but the oxen that pulled them out, that's why that's what that was all about. And then the people were naked. He made them naked to the shame of their enemies. There's nothing more shameful than being a homosexual sex and being a homosexual. Nothing more shameful than that abomination. It doesn't say that there was an abomination. It could have been. Uh, there possibly was ritual sex in Egypt. So that's something to consider. The Egyptians did at the time of the Exodus. There was a festival of drunkenness. But it looks like from this picture it was men and women drinking. So it could have been a heterosexual orgy. It could have been a homosexual orgy. We don't know for certain, but whatever the case was, they were naked and playing, and they were worshiping in a pagan way, so it could have been some sort of ritual orgy. It's an abomination just to have to say that or think about that. That's just the truth. Sorry I have to say that and put that in your thoughts, but that's just what it is, okay? Possibility. And that's how evil and debased they are. It is such a shame to see all the Western Europeans now that are all homo- Gay men out there, just abominations, horrible. Can't believe what's going on in the West. I've been gone from America for like seven years. What is the matter with you? Blessed are they which that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life, that they may enter through the city, gates of the city, for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whoever left them make it the light. Now go cast when I say go sorry about that. When I say go castrate yourself, go get castrated. Go do something like that. Put your money where your mouth is, okay? Um, I, Jesus, I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to testify you these things to the churches. Okay, so you have to keep his commandments to get access to the tree of right of life and enter to the gates of the city, which is some spiritual city possibly. And outside are dogs, okay, which are just people that go around. And if you're, for, you're, you're a male fornicator, you're a dog, okay? You're having sex with all, who, wherever and whenever you can have sex. Also, female dogs are bitches because they're having sex with multiple men. So outside are fornicators, which are dogs, and bitches, which are do women that are having sex with all the men. A female dog is a bitch, and a bitch dog has sex with multiple male dogs, okay? And are sorcerers and whoremongers, okay? There you go, whoremongers, men that are whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves to make it a lie. So guys, let's just repent. Let's repent, keep his commandments, commit, uh, confess our sin, and go forward that you might have eternal life. And those that's what it's all about. Okay, guys? This is very all. I did a video about his, him talking about his sister. All right, so this video I'm going to play is from my video that I used last year about Barry all and his sons, okay? And his daughter that he goes and rounds and asks them, what do they got to be saying? What makes you righteous? Okay, this is Barry Awe asking, okay, Feast of Satan practitioner Barry Awe asking his kids what they got to do to be saved, how they know that they're going to heaven. This is why Barry pe preaches a false gospel. It's absolutely mind-blowing that he would celebrate and teach them the Feast of Satan, yet say this and give them this false hope that they're going to go to heaven just by saying and thinking about Jesus. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Nice shot. Hey, let me ask you a question. The Bible says you got to be righteous to go to heaven. Dante, what makes you righteous? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, that's a good answer. Hey, hey Connor, the Bible says, pray that you're worthy to escape the tribulation. What makes you worthy? Jesus. Man, you guys, you're geniuses. Thank you. Hey, Jay, how do you know you're getting raptured? What's that? How do you know you're good enough to be raptured? Oh, Jesus. Now that's my boys. <laughs> hey, did you fix this? I need to drive it. <laughs> Yo, nay! My adopted son, how do you know you're worthy to be raptured? Jesus. Man, you're brilliant.
Okay, I'm at my kid's house. Oh, somebody's playing the guitar. That's my girl. Self-taught. Hey, Madison, can I ask you a question? Yeah, what's up? What makes you righteous enough to be raptured? Jesus. That's my girl. Look at that pretty kitty. She got her love for kitties from me. Danielle, I need to ask you something. Jesus! Oh man, this family knows too much. Hey Nacho, what makes you, a little puppy dog, think that you are going to be raptured? Well, Dr. Berry, I'm very glad you asked this question. You see, the answer to your query lies in the very name and nature of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, salvation. As it is written in 1 John 4, God is love. In stark contrast, man's goodness and love would only equate to evil. That is why in Matthew 7:11, the Lord said, If you then, being evil, know how to give good things unto thy children, how much more your Father, who art in heaven, shall give good things to his. You see, just as you would valiantly save your children's beloved pets from a burning building, so also will our Father save my extreme cuteness for you. Okay, guys, so let me bring it back to this. You just saw what Barry says to get in. This is what Revelation 22 says. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and so, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If Barry doesn't have the heart to tell his sons the true qualifications of being righteous, being saved, raptured, going to heaven, paradise, going to paradise, accessing the tree of life, the access to enter into the gates, into the city, and that access is to is fearing Yahweh Elohim and keeping his commandments, keeping the commandments of Yahweh Elohim. Do you think Barry is going to tell you guys, all of his viewers, Barry isn't honest and Barry needs to repent. So who are the men of this generation? The men of this about what do you got to do to be saved? Jesus. What makes you righteous? Jesus. Of course, Jesus paid, Yeshua paid for our sin to turn, but he said, if you love me, keep his commandments. It's the same thing that was spoken on Mount Sinai. There were likely two on Mount Sinai, the Father and the Son. Yahweh the Father spoke him, Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua the Son, he probably wrote them. Because he had someone, Moses' size, had to write the commandments on the tablet with his own hand and give them to Moses. So it was likely Yeshua that was up there. When Yahweh walked, Yahweh the Father possibly walked by, or no, it was announced, there were two, and there was announced. When Yahweh walked by Moses, Yahweh announced Yahweh walking by Moses. So there were two up there, the Father and the Son, okay? What don't we get? If you love me, keep my commandments. I show mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments and the Ten Commandments. It's that simple. It's one of the same. What don't we get, okay? But here's a video of, his, of Barry tell, asking his uh, son-in-law, what do we have to do to get to heaven? Jesus? Oh, I'm a Satanist. Jesus? Even Satanists believe in Jesus. The demons that he is under the influence of, Barry, even believe in Jesus. So just believing in Jesus doesn't work, Barry. Even the, even the demons believe in Jesus. Okay? They know that he's real. So that doesn't work, Barry. Sorry, your gospel is false. You have a false message. I hope you repent. I hope the people that you've taught falsely for all these years, they wake up before it's too late. So go ahead and watch Barry. He says, him and Tyler say gospel truth. The Halloween cel celebrator is going to tell you he says gospel truth. Gospel lies, guys. Gospel lies. Okay, they preach a false and incomplete gospel. What do we got to do? What do I have to do to get it to your guys' heads? That's what it is, guys. So, 
Again, children of the marketplace. A lot of you follow and bear. You're all children of the marketplace. I'm signing off. Shalom. Salam. And shalom. And salam. Alaikum. Peace on. Salam alaikum. Peace. May peace be on. Peace of Allah and be on my brothers and sisters and Master Yeshua the Messiah. Okay, so may the peace of Yahweh, the peace of Yahweh Allah be on my brothers and sisters and Messiah who have the testimony of Yeshua and who guard his commandments, who fear Yahweh Allah who have the testimony of Yeshua and who guard his commandments, the eternal gospel, no beginning, no end. That's what eternal, eternal gospel means. It's the same before and after. It's the same thing. Mount Sinai, what they were supposed to do, what we're supposed to do during the time of Yeshua, what we're supposed to do now, looking back, it's all the same. Fearing Allah, keeping his commandments. That's the eternal gospel. Faith in Messiah Yeshua. They were all looking forward to the coming of Yeshua. We're now all looking back. That's it. Shalom. Salam. Shalom be on be upon you.